Hello and good evening, everybody. And thank you very, very much for joining us tonight for Inside the AP's presentation. Uh, we've got myself, Ian Harkins, uh, along with my colleague here, Jesse Anderson Lehman. Jesse, introduce yourself to the people in TV land. Lovely. Um, so thank you again very much for joining us as people settle in and sign on. Uh, we're going to be taking you through, um, for first timers, especially for both for parents and for students, for those who would like to get started on the APs, know what to expect, uh, know what the some of the ins and outs are, and some of our recommendations for studying. Uh, this is this is the place to be. So thank you uh, very very much for joining. Um, if you're new to Apple Ruth, um, we are a tutoring company who believes firmly that when you change students' self beliefs, you change their lives. And the way that we are able to do this is through our three pillars of academic tutoring, test prep, and uh, executive functioning coaching. And it's that middle circle, the test prep, that brings us to today. So the format that we're going to have is, Jesse and I have prepared uh, some FAQs, some talking points that I think generally are covered in a lot of these webinars that we do. Uh, a lot of parents emailing us. Um, we are both tutors in uh, in different respects. I myself uh, do the history tests, um, all four of them, the government tests, and a lot of the language tests. Uh, Jesse, I'll I'll let introduce your, yourself as well because you have a remarkably uh, strong range of tests that you're <laughs> able to do. Well, yes, thank you. No, it's uh, I so usually what I focus on is in STEM subjects, so AP Stats, AP Chemistry, AP Physics, AP Calculus, um, but I've did, did the AP Computer Science tests, AP English, Lang and Lit, AP Push, uh, Government Economics. I, I ran a I, I I ran a lot of APs when I went through high school and have continued to keep up with a good portion of them. So, um, yeah, it's uh, but but mostly from the STEM side of things is is the perspective I want to try and and offer today. And then, and we're happy to talk about our experiences as well, uh, actually being students and taking these. It's not that far removed for either one of us. Um, so we'll go through these and then I have reserved plenty of time at the end for questions and answers. So I'll get to a bunch of those questions at the end. If you think of them as time goes on, just put them up in the chat and Jesse and I together will make sure that we get to them. Uh, okay, without further ado then, Oops. This is the most common introductory question that we get. Some form of help. I'm taking too many. I'm not taking uh, enough APs. Now what? I love starting with this question because it is a very good opportunity to center us for what on earth the purpose of all of these AP tests are. They are not like the SATs where they're simply supplemental sections to the SAT. Um, rather, the point is that these are twofold. One, they are meant to demonstrate that you took advantage of some of the offerings that your school had. For any of those who go to uh, rigorous high schools, you're very intent on preparing students for college and university, or if you have a school that just has a lot of AP courses, Colleges and universities, by and large, are going to know that. They're going to recognize your school. Um, or they will, at the very least, have a list of the offerings of the courses. And they will know that you were able to get to a high enough level and take advantage of these. So it does show in several ways that you followed a really rigorous academic schedule in order to do all of these. The second and the more important point, though, I think, is that the AP tests are an opportunity for you as a student to really say, I mean it when I say that I am really interested in STEM. When I, uh, when I go to your college and university, I'm, I'm really interested in the sciences. I, I want to major in biology. You know, you can tick the box that says, this is the major that I know I want to have, for instance. And then if you have no APs, 
in that or one AP, despite the fact that that course might have been offered, that paints a picture versus somebody who says, I'm really interested in STEM and you took four or five APs in STEM alone, then that and, and are able to demonstrate you did very well. That confirms something for colleges and universities and you can be placed into or accelerated program, these stand for advanced placement. The fundamental purpose of these tests is to offer college credit so that you can already start along your way and um, place out of an introductory level course so you can get to something more centered, uh, more specialized, more quickly. Um, that is, I'll, I'll talk about my experience as well, since I promised I would. I, I was able through the APs that I took, and I took five back in the day. Um, and I was able to do well enough and use those to um, place into sort of higher level language and actually graduate a semester earlier than um, my peers. So that's something else that factored into to my decision making when thinking about, you know, what what do I want to do? Even in senior year, I was trying to do APs even after getting into college. And I think that it's it's a really, really worthwhile thing to to think about there as well. Jesse, I, I turn the mic over to you. Have I have I covered everything adequately or uh, is there a glaring omission or anything that you want to add about? This? No, 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 no glaring omissions. It's you're right. You. It's it's this focus on like it's college level coursework when you're taking AP classes. And so, yeah, there's this balance of like it's there's situations where it can get you credit and it can it can set you up for success at the collegiate level. But there's also a, a good portion of it that's signaling and developing a sense of who you are as a student and where where you want to spend your time. So um, I can say that my experience in terms of college credit, I went to Northwestern and uh all of my APs, what they really offered me were uh, distribution credits and gave me the opportunity to where like all of the coursework that you're kind of required to do in a more liberal arts style education. I had kind of had a lot of that checked off and, and had it taken care of. And that gave me some freedom to where when I was in college, I got to take what I wanted to take. I got to take the classes that were interesting to me because some of the basic requirements had been taken care of already. So I had a lot more freedom as a college, as an and, and especially as a college student who was intellectually in, interested, who wanted to do interesting things. I got to do a lot of that and take advantage of the college a little bit more rather than just checking off boxes in terms of basic, uh, basic categories. Um, though I will say, I mean, it's, one of the things that I love about Apple Ruth and the reason I've I've worked here as, as long as I have is because is because we do view, you know, I mean, students are 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 human beings. I mean, right? Like like you are a human being. You have a certain amount of time in the day, you have certain things that you are interested in. And so on the flip side of this, I, I we should also say that like there are situations where somebody will try to turn themselves inside out, trying to take way too many APs. And it's there's there's a balance there because like if you're if there's something that you truly love that makes you really interesting as an applicant, if that is a band or orchestra or theater, if that is uh, mm -hmm. athletics, if that is uh, something that you do on the side, working with your own business or working for a nonprofit or volunteering, like if you are pushing yourself to take on an AP course load to the point that it is at the detriment of some of the things that make you a really interesting candidate for admission at colleges, um, just it's, it's worth taking a step back at some point and saying, okay, uh, what is my narrative? Who am I? What am I trying to put down on the page? And uh, you know, and asking yourself, what does my day look like? Am I am I am I happy with the day that I've put together now? Because ideally, you're trying to put together some mini little version of what will point toward what your day will look like once you're in college. And so uh, there is a balance here, and and certainly also if if you're at a school that doesn't offer as many APs. Um, colleges know that too. So there's 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 a like there's 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 room. It's a complex question how many APs you should get take because yeah, if you're if you had a school that doesn't offer as much, no, you are not going to be penalized for not taking advantage of something that was not even offered to you. Right. So it's 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 there's there's yeah. a lot to talk through on that. But it's it's yeah, no, I, I it's thinking in terms of like it these are call is this college level coursework and it's showing what you're interested in, I think is really important. Yeah. With that, I'm going to move on because that I I don't think I can top anything that you just said. 
Okay. For a second question, how do I know if my AP class is on track for the exam? Um, this is the part now where, as Jesse said, this is a college level class and there's more that you can do for yourself. You can be a bit more self-sufficient. The reason I say that is that the college board, which is the company that owns both the SAT and the APs and administers them, uh, they are very liberal, actually, with the course and, and putting it on their website for everybody to see. If you have not had a chance uh, to go and to have a look at it, please do. And maybe if you did at the beginning of the year, have a look again, because some of it will be much, much more instructive. Like you'll be able to see where you are and you'll be able to know like, oh, now I understand a little bit more now that I've been in the trenches, what this looks like. Um, there's two things that you can do with this. I think you can absolutely go on and have a look at what the content is, how far through you are. We'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but there are certainly um, there are certainly teachers who don't follow the the linear path, perhaps prescribed by a lot of the course overviews. They they bounce about. Yeah, I see you nodding, Jesse. They they bounce back and forth a little bit. Um, what's also really worthwhile is each one of the APs have their own weird, quirky kinds of questions that they ask. They, they you know, they they demand that you do a, you know, I'm I'm entrenched in the history, so there'll be a document based question. You need to know how to incorporate different sources into an essay. Um, for the AP US Gov test, you need to be familiar with. Uh, 12 set Supreme Court cases, and then to be able to argue with some new one that they throw you away. Um, so something else that you can do is make sure that the homework and the tests that you are doing or are going to do with your teacher in class, that they echo the kinds of questions that you uh, will be expected to answer on the actual test day. Because it doesn't, I, God forbid, I don't want the first time that my students answer a DBQ to be when it actually counts. I want them to be very well rehearsed uh, with that. And, and now is a very, very good time to be doing that. Um, Jesse, you agree with me? Yeah, absolutely. That's what all the nodding was? Great. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's, it is. It's like, I mean, you we are at the point where it starts to make a lot of sense if you, uh, to, to start looking at this, particularly because like, uh, depending on where you are in the countries or 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 how your school's set up, a lot of a lot of schools wrapped up midterms in December, but then a lot of schools kind of have wraparound semesters and are starting to wrap up midterms now. So you're already kind of thinking in terms of an accumulation of what the first semester of your class might have might have had in it. And yeah, I mean, to be clear, if you just like Google like AP Physics one and you like go and click on that first link, it will open up. The very first page that pops up will give you a unit outline, units one through seven. And exactly, if you click on the little arrows, it'll pop it up and show you every little thing that comes up with each unit in a, in a pretty good format. Honestly, it's pretty it's pretty easy. A lot of times when I first tutor a student, I'll open that up and I'll check just on Zoom. I'll check off like, okay, you've gone through this, you've gone through this, you've gone through this. So that yeah. process of being familiar with the content, you can you can go through that step by step. And then, and and same with questions. I mean, there's uh, the course and exam uh, description is a gigantic document that has a bunch of information in it. There's also FRQs from previous years. Um, it's all available online. You can start that process of figuring out how has my class been going? Because um, I can tell you, yeah, I mean, we can tell you from experience. I mean, I'm working with kids right now who have a very wide range of either covering everything really, really well. And they're like, I'm like, man, this teacher wants their kids to get fives. Like, this is nuts. Like they're hot. This is hard. <laughs> and then there's like, there's other kids, there's other, there's other teachers who are more, uh, who are, who are, who are not, who are not doing that. Just let's, let's, let's put it politely to them who are not doing that. So it's, it's, it's a balancing act and, and you have to kind of figure out for yourself where, where you feel like you're, you might be. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. Jesse, again, thank God you're here. I, yes. You said something 
th they also have past exam questions on oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. So you can really, really get a feel for what it is that you're going to, to study. Please, like the single most helpful thing out there to get ready, like to actually get test ready, is there past exam questions? And for you to feel out like how it would be that, that you would do these, how you tackle them. And they have their scoring rubrics. If it's a written out answer, as I think most all of the APs have some form of written out uh, question that you need to answer in some format, uh, some essay format, be it short or long. But they are very open as well with scoring rubrics. We'll talk about that a little more as well. Uh, when should I start reviewing with a tutor on my own? Uh, yeah, Jesse. When should somebody start reviewing with a tutor on their own? Uh, it's uh, so yeah. So whether whether you want to work with a tutor, whether you want to work on your own, it's we're getting to that point. It's 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 fascinating, right? Like this is something that uh, that different different people do different ways, uh, depending on where you're coming from. I mean, if you're coming from a place where the class has been a little bit more complicated you've 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 had a little bit more difficulty understanding the material it's been a little bit of a rough road and and you're more worried about content stuff then yeah right now is the answer right like start going back and making sure that you're catching catching stuff that you've worked on before that uh that you can uh that you that you can try to go back through it understand it better understand it more fully have everything kind of uh you know covering all your bases not to mention the fact that doing that can also help you make sure that you're keeping up with your with your class and that you're that you're you know doing the best that you can in the classroom and getting the best grades that you can because of course we want good grades too. Um, and then also you can also if you if you felt like you're on top of it and you're like doing really really well, uh, you know, starting to focus your preparation a little bit more on test prep and starting to make sure that you know what FRQs look like. You see the examples that are posted online. You, you've you started doing some practice testing on your own. This is something that, um, yeah, you know, everybody kind of, my in my experience, the vast majority of tutoring is some blend of those two. And so when we're working with kids, there's some blend of making sure we, we're doing the coursework and, and, and making sure we've got the concepts down. And then eventually there's always some point and it kind of varies for, for different students. It could be in February or maybe more toward toward March or even April, if a student's very well prepared to start getting into test prep. And, and this is something that a lot of AP teachers do on their own. I just because I mean AP teachers have a really hard job. And I and I do want to say I, I took a jab at certain teachers a little bit earlier. I should say like I, I, I loved it. Believer. I was there for that. <laughs> but I, I'm a big believer that like tutors and teachers are allies. And we're both we both have similar goals or the same goal, which is that, you know, students do well and teachers, AP teachers have an impossible task in terms of the amount of content they need to teach and also prepare for a really scary exam. So, you know, from the eight for a teacher, they'll often wait to get into like exam specific prep until, you know, maybe even as late as April is when I start seeing them start doing like a practice AP test or real FRQs. Um, in tutoring, we do that a lot earlier, right? We'll start in yeah. you know February, March. We're already starting to think about the test because we that's something that you know we can fit people toward toward the test very, very well if we're given a little bit longer runway. So yeah, yeah. I think your your point is so well made, Jesse. Um, I have students that I have started working with for my APs already. I would say that if you are somebody who really wants help with the content, wants to do well in the class as well, yes, February, early March, pre-spring break is a really good idea. If we start in April, then it is much less about reviewing content and it is much more about now let's, let's start cracking down on how to answer the questions because there's just not time for everything else and because it's um, because and, time is linear you've got to like start early like if you're if you if you want a boilerplate answer it's like get started in february like gets in that way you know you've got enough time because like that's the thing you can never get the time back 
So <laughs> there is a side to it that you like, you never want to wait so late that then you end up scrambling. That's, that's the hard part. Yeah. Time, time is linear. He teaches the AP physics. He would know. That's got it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are AP graders looking for? Um, we did a uh, we did a presentation actually where I interviewed a couple of AP graders and that was absolutely fascinating. Like they they spoke about how they that year they they genuinely had all met in Kansas City just because it was a, a centrally located city where everybody could fly into fairly easily, and they they rent out like these giant gymnasiums or warehouses and really like dozens if not hundreds of graders are just there like reading and reading everything um it's fascinating behind the scenes stuff but you don't have to guess again these these websites the the college board they are very liberal with sharing with you what it is they are looking for and in the same way that Jesse was saying we uh, he can tick off different topics, I also will read some of these essays that students will submit to me. I'll say, okay, you have a, a point for thesis. Here's how a thesis is described. Would you give yourself this point? Do you think that you made an argument? Yes, no. Do you think that you got a point for contextualization? Um, you know, here's how many um, here's how many mistakes you made on this Spanish. Like, do you think that this falls below a, uh, a you know clarified for the reader what it was you were talking about? You you these are um, they try their best to give you some objective rubrics for you to self grade. Um, so please do remember that. And I would also add for a lot of the written portions, maybe for the, the hardcore stems, this is different. I work a lot with the qualitative, the uh, the Englishes, the histories. Um, there is not necessarily a right answer. There is not necessarily a single outside piece of knowledge that they want you to bring in. We want different classes, different teachers to teach according to what excites them, what they think they can impart to a class. And genuinely, that makes for a really rich, um, variated uh, student body out there who knows different or feels comfortable with different things, can draw on different examples. That is great. So do not feel like there is one cookie cutter answer that they're after. That is not the case. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that that's uh, that that's promising. Um, that that's not what they're looking for. Jesse, what what else would you say? What you're an AP grader. What do you, what do you want in this world? Well, so that's interesting. I I, I wouldn't. I'm not an AP grader officially, but you're right. I do. No, I, but... I do spend. I do spend. I do. I mean, it's 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 interesting. It's it's one of the top things that I can get a student to do in tutoring is to start thinking like an AP grader. It really is amazing how much of a difference it can make on the FRQ side of things, on the free response side of things, because it's like it's, you know, it's it's a skill that is not necessarily something that a lot of high schoolers have a chance to develop. I mean, it's there are there are, there are uh, teachers out there who are getting much better in, in you know modern teaching in like showing rubrics ahead of time encouraging students to understand rubrics as they enter into assignments knowing what you know what to look for and what to provide um but it, it i mean that's literally what you can do if you, you go on ap central you go and you look at the previous exam questions and right next you know right next to the exam questions like you know all the questions from the 2023 test it will then have you know the scoring guidelines and uh, there are also some other notes that at a, that are a little bit higher level that uh, that are more about like broadly what uh, what the graders are looking for conceptually from students that year. Um, this is always really interesting to see the trends that go from year to year in terms of what the focus might be in in a given year and what they want to make sure students are doing. Um, sometimes I'll get into that, but the scoring guidelines are the ones that like it's literally it'll tell you like you get a point for doing this, you get a point for doing that, you get a point for doing that. Um, 
and so there's a piece of this that's like being very particular about making sure that you're hitting all the steps and you're wa- writing everything down because it's not just about giving the answer at the end. It's about how you got there and making sure that you can get the partial credit along the way, because that's the path to a five is not necessarily getting every single point on every single question. Cause that's really hard uh, on these tests, but making sure that you get all the points along the way, or as many of them as you can along the way, even if, you fall short or have something that you did a little bit wrong or, or did a little differently than what they were looking for. Um, There is room, like, like, like Ian's saying, there's, there's room for some variation in terms of like how you get to an answer. But I think my experience has been in all of the, in all of the AP exams, they, they want to have the AP greeters love to have that feeling that like you took to heart what that class was about and have learned how to write and express and talk through things in the mode of that exam. Um, AP stats is like this. AP AP statistics is funny because one of the biggest reasons students feel uncomfortable at the beginning of AP stats is they learn all this vocabulary and they learn how to speak like a statistician. And it's like really weird because like statistics is actually a really young branch of math. It didn't come around until like the 1800s. So like statistics has its own vocabulary, its own way of thinking about things and its own way of expressing uncertainty and uh, uh, about about certain certain outcomes and you have to kind of learn that at early on in the class but then you also have to continually express that as you work through the the, the work of the class because when it comes time to write those free response questions they want to see you writing in the language of statistics they want to see you expressing yourself in a way that makes sense to them um but this i mean it's 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 really important you know that you know how to stick to the question that's asked but also express that you've learned all this stuff over the course of the year, because this is a cumulative exam at the end of the, at the end of it all. Um, And this goes back to a slide. I think we actually skipped a couple back. That was about how should we plan out our study program that like, when you're looking at like, how do I line this all up and what do I, how, you know, what do I need to make sure that I'm preparing for and how do I make sure that I, I time out everything correctly? It's like, you know, sustained practice is important having these clues that are like showing you how to think and understand what the exam is looking for you to do. Um, that's all really important. And also having resources. I mean, like we, like we've pounded it in AP central, but also, you know, a lot of you guys who are in AP classes, you, you, your teachers will use AP classroom. That's a great resource. Khan Academy has, I mean, hugely expressive resources that are, you know, or hugely expansive resources I, yes, they're also expressive. They are, are fun, right? Khan Academy is great. Um, and also like the other thing I'll remind people, uh, if you look at the YouTube channel for the AP, APs uh, on YouTube, it's uh, they will actually have like huge hour long like lectures from AP teachers and they will like spend 45 minutes to an hour going through individual FRQs and showing you how to do them. Um, that's an immensely powerful resource too. So it's like, as you start putting together your study plan, it's starting to think like a grader, starting to build your understanding of what this test has, uh, to, what these tests have to offer, and also making sure that you start lining up these resources so that, uh, so that you, uh, so that you, uh, you know, you, you have things to help you outside of outside of class you're not trying to do it all alone and that's also of course where tutors come in so you know yeah. having one of us help you you know we're, we're all we're both available for tutoring too and that's something that we can we can obviously help with too um and uh jesse uh, along with what ap graders are looking for yes there are the rubrics given i, I don't think either of us said they also have like past tests that yeah. Yeah. they've also graded and have put up there so you can read some other kids essay on yeah. one of these questions and say and then they'll they'll write out like a giant um explanation for here's why we gave so and so this grade so you can also you can have a look for yourself like this is not uh this is not a, a trade secret they want you to know exactly what it is that they're looking for um jesse are you saying that i skipped a slide this would I be think, horrific i'm pretty Did sure I? The how to plan my study program, didn't we? What should I start reviewing with two? Oh my goodness! <laughs> that this would have been a dis- you have saved me from a fate worse than death. This was, this would have been a horrific disaster. 
Thank you. Um, yeah, feel this question then. You brought us here. Um, how should one plan out one's study program? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, I, I, I started to lay out a little bit. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's in some ways, this is this can be something that is very cut and dry. You look at how many weeks do I have left? How much content do I want to go over? How much do I spend on test prep? And you kind of divide it out. Um, and that can give you an idea of like what a five week, a 10 week, a 15 week study plan might look like, um, you know, and that, that it's that balance, right? Like, like we've, like we've been saying, I feel like we've been saying this in a few different ways. It's that balance between the content and the format. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's, this isn't exactly accurate because obviously content and format work in both the multiple choice and the free response side of things. But it, it could be generally said that like, you know, if you are struggling more with the content, you want to make sure that you're getting ready for the multiple choice side of things. If you are, if you have that kind of down, you feel pretty good about multiple choice questions, then it, you start getting into more of the art artistry of how, how the form, how to format your FRQs and how to make sure that you're answering those most effectively. The reality is they're both worth the same amount, right? It's 50, 50, when you add it all up there, that's 50% comes from multiple choice, 50% comes from your response. So you want to make sure that you're uh, spending a good amount of time on each of those. Um, and yeah, lining up the resources. I mean, and if it's not, you know, if you're trying to work on your own or with friends, if you're not in a position where you, you're trying to work with a tutor or, or anything like that, I think the ones that people forget about are like your teachers a resource, of course. Um, we're used to kind of following the teacher's plan, but it's also true that if you want to go and talk to your teacher and be like, hey, I'm like nervous about the exam. This is something that's really important to me. Like, what can I start doing on my own? Uh again, teachers are our allies and that will really demonstrate to a teacher that you're serious about it, that like you're trying to do your best work in this class and you want to, you want to do well on the exam at the end. Um, and it's also true, like, you know, there, there are, there are guides out there. Barron's guide is one that we use, uh, fairly frequently because it comes with, uh, with, uh, exam, uh, with, uh, practice exams at the end, a good number of them. And they tend to work pretty well, but of course there's other ones, five steps to a five or, Princeton Review or any any number of other things. Um, and there are also, I mean, we've got webinars, we've got final reviews, we've got a whole slate of things that we can talk about that I'm sure Ian will be able to get into that that are like giving you other stand, other bench points, other benchmarks, other other things that you can follow along that can help add structure to this. Because I think we, rec I, we recognize that as you build a study plan, one of the hardest things is figuring out how to structure that in a way that is orderly and that you can make, you know, incremental progress every day. That's, that's my number one rule is like sustained practice beats cramming every single day of the week. And so yeah. that's, 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 that's why I said earlier, earlier, just better. <laughs> Cause yeah, it is. You can always, you know, laying out a study plan and making sustained progress is always going to be more, is going to give you better gains in the end. Yeah. My, my answer to this question, I think, builds off with what Jesse says. And I hope that in taking these tests, which I of course understand like that they are they are long, they are arduous, they take a year to to get ready for. There is no shortage though of resources out there for you if you really if you're serious about this and you want to study. And I hope that people find that a, a solace. Um you know, the, the College Board has plenty of materials out there. You have teachers. If if you have a peer that you particularly trust in the class with you, that can be a wonderful resource. Um, you have us. You have Barron's book. I, I am particularly fond of Barron's books. I feel like they do a good job in mimicking the tests the best. Um there are YouTube videos galore out there for different things. If you want to, um, if you want to get crash courses on different chapters, different units, different pieces of content, um, and the benefit to having a longer lead time is that you do get that parallel of yes, I feel comfortable with the material, and yes, I feel comfortable expressing it, using it in a certain way, using it to argue. Uh, recalling certain things, using what I know to uh, figure out and eliminate getting to the right answer for a multiple choice question, that sort of thing. Um, and yes, I I am going to use this to to lead into uh, some of the things that we have to offer. Hopefully, you 
you feel comfortable enough to trust us with uh, some of our review sessions that we'll do. Uh, so what I, I hope to do now is we've got some questions that have been coming in. If anybody else has questions or if, if you want us to elaborate on something, please, goodness, do. I've, I've tried. Uh, we haven't reserved enough time in the past for questions, so I'm, I'm trying uh, my utmost to do that. So throw up your questions. We'll happily answer them. Some people have asked some really, really good questions so far that we can get to. Um, just as a reminder, though, as, as you're milling about what to say, here's who we are and what we do. Um, the exciting part, the exciting offering is that uh, we've got these uh, workshops that we're doing. So these run from late February and early March as start dates. So exactly what Jesse's been saying is a really, really good target uh, to start with, with um, uh, with when to start working with someone. These ones that we're doing cover the eight most popular AP subjects. They're two-hour online workshops. They will be led by uh, one of our expert AP tutors. Uh, and these get into some of the questions that are more uh, subject-specific instruction and strategies. So if you've got any questions about exactly how do I structure uh, my review. I think this would be a really, really good question to bring to one of these that has a specific bent to a specific test. Um, another great thing about these is that they include free graded practice tests with a personalized FRQ feedback. Um, I have to emphasize students can and should register for workshops, even if you are not available at the live workshop time. Uh, if you're in the UK, uh, or if you're even on the West Coast, they might be at funny times. So all registrants will still receive the recording and they'll be able to take a practice test. Uh, so you'll still get that feedback, even if it's just not live. Um, and then, of course, there's AP tutoring that we can do privately where you get to work with a one on one mentor um, and you can tailor much more of a prep plan based on what your feedback directly is about what it is that you are looking for. So when I work with students, when Jesse works with students, and boy, do we ever work with a lot of AP students. Like it's it's a it's a it's an excitingly busy time for us. And I much I, I really, really like working with APs. Um, it's the opportunity for us to to review, to edit, to just enhance students' familiarity and understanding with uh, free response questions with subject matter, uh, with just everything that they need to know to get ready for the tests in May. Okay, I think that, that is enough uh, my monologuing. So please let us open ourselves up to the question and answer. Uh, we've got some questions pouring in. Um, this is a great one. Will the AP Gov test be on the blue book? So for those who might not know, in the spring of 2024, uh, there will be digital AP exams that are being offered. Uh, they are for eight courses, though. Let's see if I can remember them by heart. They are the AP English Lang and Composition, the AP English Literature and Composition, the AP Comp Sci Principles, AP Seminar, AP Euro, AP US, AP World, and AP uh, African-American studies to some pilot schools only. I don't believe that any of the others are on Blue Book. And again, for those who are not familiar, Blue Book is the, uh, the new application that the College Board is using to administer their tests, most famously the SAT now. Um, if, if you've heard the rumblings of how the SAT has had a format overhaul to go all digital, this is the same application. I quite like it. it it's, you know, you, you download the Blue Book app, uh, you'll get a code, you punch in the code on the day, and you're off to the races on the actual test. So gone is the sort of lengthy times of having to fill out your information. That's all done beforehand. You can use your own computer that's fully charged. Um, you know, you you do still get scratch paper if that uh, feels important to you. Uh, so yeah, it, it that's a fantastic question, anonymous attendee. 
Um, Heather Lambert asks a couple of questions I thought were really good. If you don't do well on an AP, will colleges see that? You are not, um, you are not mandated to submit any AP. Now, I don't know what well on an AP means, though. Um, you know, some colleges will offer credit even for, for threes. Um, um, but no, I, I think just, am I right, Jesse, like informationally, you just, you don't have to submit any one of these that you don't want to. Yeah. And it's, and I, th and I think whenever, I, whenever we talk about this question, I think it's, it's important to realize that like APs are an end point of a larger process. Uh, if you are in a situation where it's a class that was offered, you're taking the AP exam at the end. There's a lot of reasons why people do poorly on exams and colleges know that. So like, you know, where, you know, whereas on the SAT and ACT, you get the chance to retake them. And so there's more of an opportunity that if something goes wrong, you can kind of make up for it on AP something, sometimes something goes wrong and you just have a bad day and there's like, you know, there's not much you can do about it. Um, and that's okay. And that, and colleges will understand. That. In fact, my favorite trick to do with this, with my students is like, use that as a point of growth and talk about it in your college essay say like yeah i had a really tough time yeah. I, didn't the, I didn't get the score that i wanted but i used that as motivation to go and do this other thing and look i got you know i don't know all a's in my senior year even when all my friends were slacking off or look or i was able to you know go and focus i refocused and the next day i took another ap and i did much better or you know like like Frame it as part of the narrative that humanizes you and makes you somebody that colleges th think would be interesting to have on campus. I, I think that that, you know, there's no reason for anything to be a just straight up weakness. Any weakness can be turned into a strength if you spin it correctly in the college admissions process. I, I, you know, it's it's part of that viewing students as people holistically rather than just viewing it as like a, a certain test score. Right. Yeah. Words of wisdom. Yeah. Uh, Marley Jones asks, uh, if my teacher has a review unit before the AP test, do I still need to review on my own as much? Don't don't ask us. Don't guess. Go have a look at some of the stuff that we've talked about uh, on College Board and see if you, you get it. Each one of the tests has a complete uh, practice test that they they have as like a, an example so you don't have to to wonder you can you can have a look and see like hey how okay i've done the the unit review um how do i feel about questions about this unit how do i feel about the test in general um so yeah don't 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 wonder it, it depends a little bit on the flavor of um if the teacher really does get to everything sometimes Sometimes in those things, there'll be students who who take over the group and who can direct things to, you know, I want to talk about just this bit, whereas everybody else might have a different question or be uh, anxious about something else. So, like I said, don't, don't wonder. Um, have a look and um, uh, go find some of these practice tests and you know, uh, treat yourself to a mock. Why not? Uh, Roxanne Spiegel asks, what is the best way to prepare for an AP exam without a tutor or a class? Uh, I I think we, have we covered that? I think, Jesse? Yeah, I mean, just again, just to recap, I think that you start with the College Board resources, then you expand outward to maybe more toward like, Khan Academy and some of the AP official uh, YouTube channel stuff. And then you expand out, out from there to third party resources. Um, and, and, you know, because I, I do think there's a lot available and college board has made a real effort to be more transparent and have more, um, have more of those resources available to everybody for free. So, because there's like, you know, definitely implicit in this is the, is the part where like tutoring costs money, prep classes cost money, the, or, you know, the workshops, all of that. So like, if you're looking to get a starting point, start with the resources that are closest to the source, not to mention the fact that like the best prep, the like as as much as we, we like we complimented Barron's earlier on being pretty good about mocking up 
what the APs look like and having it be pretty close. The reality is like the best example of what the test is going to be like is what the test has been previously and what the, and so like, go back, take a look at that. Those, yeah, that's definitely, you know, in that order of operations is what I would recommend. Yeah. Um, oh, I like this one. What if you don't know your major yet, but still eager to take APs to impress colleges? Um, I didn't know my major until the end of my sophomore year in in college. Yeah, that that's a perfectly legitimate uh, place to be. But what APs can be is, again, that tool to say, here's what I'm at least interested in. Here's what I feel I do well. And here's what I'd like you to judge me. And as well, what I'm what I might be interested in pursuing in college university whether or not i i you know i i took i took four language ap's uh when i was a student i did not major in languages uh i just i could speak five languages and i wanted to let them know that i spent a lot of high school studying languages um so it it's you know, I think it, it just paints a picture of what you have done as a high school. Um, Jesse, am I right? Yeah. Please say yes. Yeah, for, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and, That's what and I wanted like, you to say. And, and, and for sure, just, you know, take what you're interested in, take what's available. And like, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, you do not need to major in the thing that you, are focusing on when you're in high school and not to, or vice versa. You don't have to know what you're going to major in in order to take the right APs, right? N no college is going to say, well, you, you took these APs. That's what you're stuck with. Like, like if you are intellectually curious, take what's available to you, do the best that you can with the courses that, that your school has. And, uh, and uh, that, that will pay dividends when you go to apply to colleges for sure. Um, doing some quick answering. Um, when is the best time to start studying? Uh, I say like half past four in the afternoon because it's right after tea time. So you're, you know, you have that sort of caffeine and maybe sugar rush. Uh, not 9 p.m. 9 p.m. is just uh, absolute no. Um, I think we we covered that, like, you know, st starting to study sort of uh, end of February, beginning of March to tackle some of the specific questions and then maybe in March as well, you can go back and you'll have some, it, it, it's a good time to review some of the older stuff uh, as well, stuff that you might've learned October, November time. Um, there's a, a couple of things, which APs are hardest, which are some of the less harder APs? I don't know because the the grades are curved as well don't forget like it's not as though you must pass a certain threshold to well it, it can be for that as well but it, it how, your grade also depends on how everybody else did um so you know i'm i'm not sure how to answer that like like the ap us history is one of the most popular ones to take so to get a five on that really means that a lot of other people had to do incredibly you know a lot of you can count on a lot of other people doing incredibly well on that test um whereas i don't know the ap german famously you can get like half the test wrong and still get a five um I think the the physics one is sort of famous for just being a uh, a real uh, brain melter. Am I right, Jesse? Like, uh, yeah, this... it's. I mean, it's funny. Like, if you if you go on, I don't know, if you wanted to like go on Reddit and check which APs are hardest, which ones are easiest, you can find rankings like this. I don't find them particularly helpful because I think it varies a ton based on the type of student. Yeah. And 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 who ends up, you know, who, who ends up in, in the class and what you end up focusing on. So it's like it's hard. Yeah, there's there's certainly some that that focus on more content than others. And there's 
some that see their numbers skew in different ways if you look at the curve but broadly yeah. speaking this it's a hard question to answer i would uh, i would and i would say that it's maybe a little little bit off of 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 what sort of uh i think the main point should be which is that you know it's it's yeah. you you take the test you do the best that you can and it's it's about the cumulative effect of that and less about i'm going to try to take all the easy ones so i can get a bunch of fives uh, yeah um got a repeat question who uh, whose first question i answered but her second question is just great um, my son is thinking about not taking some of the AP exams, even though he's doing well in the courses. Will that reflect negatively on his college applications? Um, so I I do. I love this question. Um, now, I'm also going to stay away from being a college counsellor. I, I don't want to, that, that's not our Bennywick. That's not what we are here to do. So I, I cannot give a definitive like yes or no, but something that I, I will, something that this is giving me an opportunity to talk about. And I, Jesse and I have actually spoken about this before and, and shared some stories. So it does happen that there are students, for, for me, it happens a lot around athletes. These tests are offered in May time. And that can be when championships, playoffs are, are happening as well. These are students who are with, with recruiters or something. I, I, you know, insert whatever extracurricular, whatever time suck it is that you can think of. Um, there are situations where I've, where I do sit down with students and we have an understanding that actually you I, I admire you 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 wanting to work with a tutor but it is clear that you you work so hard you're not getting back until 8 p.m all of april 9 p.m for some people you don't have the time to put into these ap exams that's because you are doing something incredibly worthwhile and rewarding, something that also paints a, a, a picture of the, the time that you devoted to a certain skill, a certain craft. And you know that comes at the expense of the AP. And that can be a, a good thing. We are, when we can, we are so, so happy to tailor what we do around a busy student's schedule. So I'm not saying I, I regularly dissuade uh, dissuade students from taking an AP when they're busy. It's you know it's it's a remarkably um, infrequent event, but it's giving me an opportunity to say to this: if if your if your son is thinking about not taking an AP even though he's doing well in the course, well, what's what is substituting that? Like what 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 is the, the reason? Because he might be devoting himself to something else. Does he feel like it comes at a time of the year where he's just not going to be able to? Is it all of the APs? Is it, do, do they seem scary? Is, you know, but there's, if you are going to take one of these APs and if you are going to study in the month of April, it, it really does actually have to be something that you conscientiously set aside the time for this is this is not these tests are not business as usual you, you another thing that you can do to help your studying is clear out april as best as you are able to um because you know second semester is also when finals are coming around they can build on ap's as well uh but i am i'm conscious of how many demands there are on teenagers time and um, the AP is is going to be a um, a big commitment if you do try to take one. Jesse, you have so many good things to say about things like this. Do you do you agree with that? I I do. And and not only are like other valuable things that you could be doing with your time real, stress and anxiety are real too. And I mean. 
you know, students are as stressed or as anxious as ever, if not way more so. A lot of studies have come out showing that. So, yeah, I mean, if there's a, a way in which the prospect of taking these exams is really like weighing down on you and affecting your ability to uh, like you just you just don't want to have to deal with it. Th that's another scenario that I've seen come up, though. I do kind of agree that we have another question here that's kind of along these same lines, like anonymous, yeah, which one? anonymous attendee that was asking, like, teachers say, take the exam. There's no downside. Um, I, I will say that that's the other side of this, too, is that you don't I, you know, the stress and anxiety are real. The like many things you're trying to do with your time are real. The thing that is maybe not so real is that fear of a low score being like so detrimental that there's no way you could somehow recover from it. Like uh, if 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 the reason that you're not wanting to take the test is, is because you're like, well, what's the point? I'm going to get like a two. I don't want to do that. Um, no, I mean, you, you should go and take there's not like if you're if you're willing to put in a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, go and take the, the test you know, it's, it's, it's worth doing and you shouldn't be afraid of like scoring too low. And, and especially in most high schools, no, your, your, your AP exams will not factor into your GPA, at least not directly. I've seen very few examples where teachers give like a bonus, but it's like, you don't get your scores back till summer. So that's like, no, I don't, don't worry about it affecting your GPA. Those are two separate things. Yeah. Um, Jesse, this is a marvelous question as well that I'd love to throw your way because, again, I feel like you work with so many first-time students. So, um, anonymous attendee, anonymous attendee, just uh, really hit killing. Asking, it. you know, yeah. Um, uh, thank you to to all of the attendee family. Um, taking my first AP test, what are some of the major pitfalls I should be aware of? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 it's. I mean, first off, congratulations. It's a yeah. Big, you know, Welcome to the club. Yeah, I say this to I say this to all my students that the that the first hurdle is taking the test and, and the first well, not, there's way more hurdles before that, but like taking the test is a real thing and like taking it is good and awesome and I encourage people to do it. And then um, it's a good thing to ask like, what are some things that could be difficult around? That? I mean, people try you know some of the major pitfalls i've seen waiting to the last minute and trying to do a bunch of prep and then uh putting yourself in a bad mental space as a result whether that's again through stress and anxiety or through just purely not getting enough sleep like that's the worst when i hear a student who yeah. just like, stayed up all night long and didn't get any sleep and then they end up getting a worse score on the test because you're a human who's stuck in a meat suit body that like needs to have it's like normal like sleep and sustenance and stuff so remember that you're a human being there's only so much you can do don't try and cram it all into the last bit and then put yourself in a position where you're less you're less able to do your best work um make sure that all the simple things that you take care of those ahead of time so have your pencils have your you know make sure your calculator's charged if it's a math a math test make sure that you uh you know have a bottle of water or something you know all those all those little like things about making sure that the just normal stuff is taken care of um take a practice test so i i think if there's one thing pound for pound that somebody can do that's worth more than anything else it's like make sure you take a practice test and we can help you with that at apple ruth you can also find those yeah. things online um because the uh there's just like don't forget that it is a timed test. Uh, we can focus so much on getting things perfect and getting things to where you know the material really, really well. Sometimes it's hard to remember, like you get 90 minutes, you got to answer, you know, depending on the test, 50 to 70, you know, multiple choice, like five to seven free response. So make sure that you, uh, that you do like, you know, make sure that the first, that when you go to take the test, it's not the first time you've seen a test like yeah. that. Um, that I would folks, say those are important. Folks, thank you so, so much for spending uh, the last hour with us. If any of this uh, spark, if any of uh, this sparks your interest and you'd like to reach out, our contact information is at the bottom of this slide as well. Um, any of our team or Jesse and I would be more than happy to 
to answer any individual questions that you might have more specific or, or guide you to any of the other resources that we have. Um, I, I do so sincerely hope that this has been helpful. Um, Jesse, you have a, a sign off and a, a pep talk that I think is marvelous and heartwarming. And I, I feel it only appropriate to give you the, the final word. Well, that's, that's, that's a sign I've done it too much. No, it's, I, yes. My number one message for everybody is like, you are a person, you are a human being, you are a student, you're not, you are not a collection of test scores, right? You are not a collection of numbers. Uh, so just as you go through this process, yeah, we, we do a lot of talking, especially we're tutors. Like our, our job is to try to optimize and get as many points as possible. That's why they pay us the big bucks. They don't pay us the big bucks, but they, that's why they pay us the big bucks, right? Uh, is to get, get those numbers moving in the right direction. But sometimes this pursuit of perfection and getting all the points and doing all of that takes us away from the underlying, you know, the underlying fact that it's a, you're a person, you are uh, somebody who has interests, you're somebody who has value. And uh, ultimately, that's what colleges are looking for. They're not looking for a collection of numbers. They're looking for people who are going to contribute once they once they come to campus and contribute for four years, not just like, you know, this test will be three hours of your life. Uh, the, your college career will be four years of your life. So just keep that in mind. It's and and you know you're valuable. Don't 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 forget that through this process. So yeah, folks. Again, thank you very very much. I hope this is not the last time that we uh, see you, and I hope that this has been helpful, calming, uh, somehow pointing you in the right direction. Um, have a lovely Thursday, uh, the rest of the evening, and good luck to everybody taking the tests. Bye bye.